Hi, this is Scott Garibay, and today we're going to talk about Dungeons and Dragons. We're going to talk about Stranger Things, Season 1, Episode 1, and we're going to talk about Karen Wheeler. All right, so Karen Wheeler is a very important character in in Stranger Things. And the real and the reason why is I think the Duffer Brothers, you know, love Stranger. They love Dungeons and Dragons. And what they're showing us is they're like, hey, the core four, they all share friendship and they all share Dungeons and Dragons. And they all share the supernatural and they all share the world. And they all share openness. And they all they all have open minds because they play Dungeons and Dragons. But the regular world is filled with muggle people who can never understand the supernatural and are locked to one world and are truly alone. And that's what Karen Wheeler is. Karen Wheeler is showing us the horrible abyss that that singular identity people are locked into, right? So you and I are manifold sentient. We have watched the sunrise on 30 worlds, right? And we've uh, we've witnessed death through Dungeons and Dragons. We've witnessed life through Dungeons and Dragons. We've lived in, we've witnessed birth through Dungeons and Dragons. We and our our friendships have been marinated in it, and we know that the supernatural is real. And the reason why is we deal with it in in Dungeons and Dragons. And it helps us to see it in the real world. And I I don't think anybody who plays Dungeons & Dragons doesn't really understand that the supernatural is quite real, right? Because it gives us a vantage. It gives us a place to stand where we can see the world in a better light, right? Now, without a doubt, people of faith have this. They have a sacred vantage, right? And they, and, you know, I've known that demons and devils are real for a long time, right? But atheists and agnostics don't know that. But once they start playing Dungeons & Dragons... They start thinking, you know, figuring out things like true name, which very much relates to the real world, and um, and they start to see things, right? So Karen Wheeler is a really fascinating character, and so it shows us that one, if you are Sans Dunce and Dragons, you are locked to one identity, and she is. She is a suburban mom whose husband doesn't love her, and whose children don't care about her and lie to her constantly. And take all of her provi- all of her nurturing for granted, right? She's locked in this desiccated, singular identity, and because she doesn't play Dungeons and Dragons, that's all. It's the only identity she's ever going to have, right? And her her life is pretty harsh because of it. The other thing is her relationships are desiccated and small and shallow, right? Um, she doesn't have any real friends. Her husband, and, and again, her relationships with her family are low and shallow, right? And then, um, but she perseveres and just kind of squeaks out this meager existence, right? And I think you and I, as Dungeon Masters and Dragon Masters, we need to realize how rich our lives are, right? We're not trapped in one identity. We can take risks, right? We can be anything, right? We can be a different class. We can be a different background. We can be a different gender. We can be a different, you know, species, uh, orientation, all of the all of the parameters of our identi- identity, we can add to them, right? We can live in these other sentiences, right? Whereas Karen Wheeler is very trapped, and she is a beautiful character in uh, Stranger Things, and I think the Duffer Brothers have done a really good job of showing you if you're li- if you have a life without Dungeons and Dragons, it's gonna suck. It's gonna suck. Period. Right? And I think Karen Wheeler is the perfect depiction of that. Uh, Every single word you just heard is my humble opinion on Stranger Things. The important part is when I hear your humble opinion on Stranger Things and or Dungeons and Dragons. Please continue liking and subscribing and have a fetch millennium.